I want to play this clip for you that just came out of the Supreme Court uh, just this morning. Kataji Brown Jackson, there's this case going on uh, regarding the state of Missouri, and they've sued regarding the coercion of social media platforms during COVID-19 or using COVID-19 as a premise, the federal government going to these agencies. Listen to Kataji Brown Jackson's, it's not even a question, it's a statement that she makes in the case. Do we have that, guys? Justice Jackson? So my biggest concern is that your view has the First Amendment hamstringing the government in significant ways in the most important time periods. Um, I mean, what would, what would you have the government do? I've heard you say a couple times that the government can post its own speech, but in my hypothetical, um, you know, kids, this is not safe, don't do it, um, is not going to get it done. And so I, I guess some might say that the government actually has a duty to take steps to protect the citizens of this country, and you seem to be suggesting that that duty cannot manifest itself in the government encouraging or even pressuring uh, platforms to take down harmful information. So can you help me? Because I'm really, I'm, I'm really worried about that, um, because you've got the First Amendment operating um, in an environment of threatening circumstances from the government's perspective, and you're saying that the government can't interact with the source of th those problems. And Your Honor, I understand that instinct, and I guess what I tell you is... Roger, that's a Supreme Court Justice, Ketanji Brown Jackson, appointed by Joe Biden, confirmed by the Senate, saying that the First Amendment hamstrings the government in important times. She mentions COVID-19 as a once-in-a-lifetime pandemic. She says the government's adding their speech by telling people their basic safety guidelines isn't enough, that the government must come in to protect the citizens. And then she adds, especially at a time when there is so much threatening misinformation that's being spread. I don't think we uh, should be surprised how she's going to rule on this one, but let's just take those statements on their sure. face. What does it mean that we have someone on the Supreme Court that's espousing these beliefs? Well, she's woke. I mean, this is the same woman who, as a nominee to the court, couldn't define what a woman was. So this really isn't surprising. What's amazing is her view is that the government and the government's needs are paramount to the, uh, to the U.S. Constitution. They are not. There's a reason they call this the First Amendment. It's a reason it's the First Amendment. Everything flows from free speech. Uh, so uh, and then secondarily is this idea that it's not enough for the government just to put out their narrative, uh, but everything else is kind of deemed disinformation. Who is to say uh, that the views of Jack Posobiec on any given topic, or anyone else for that matter, that that's disinformation? Who is the arbiter of what's true and what's false. If we allow that that's the government, well, then we're going to be lied to a lot. Uh, this is a fundamental free speech argument. This may be the most important uh, case to be come before the court, other than perhaps the immunity case we're waiting on for regarding Donald Trump. And I'd, I'd like to thank the human events team in there for getting me clips uh, and just kind of going through, parsing through some of these arguments and pulling this out. Um, again, Jackson over and over saying that she's nudging them back to these concessions that if there was coercion, that there might be a First Amendment violation, uh, but saying that it's it's allowable, an allowable violation because of the uh, once in a lifetime pandemic. And it sounds like she's trying to get back to this yelling fire in a crowded theater, falsely yelling fire in a crowded theater uh, argument that the government can come in in, in the name of protection, it's always done in the name of protection, in order to censor free speech. Well, Lincoln did suspend habeas corpus of, uh, of that section of the Constitution during World War II, uh, pardon me, during the Civil, Civil War. War. Uh, so there is some precedent, but... Well, can, there, there were some civil liberties violations during World War II as well. I'm uh, sure there, that's what you're thinking there, of. There, there, there certainly were. Uh, Maybe we could ask George Takei about that. Huh? The, the point, of course, is... Uh, that these people see government as as supreme. And as far as her claim that this was a one-time event, well, not if you listen to Bill Gates. Uh, it is, uh, I don't think they plan it to be a one-time event. 
So, uh, look, this is a, a crucial ruling, uh, but they are the party uh, of censorship, of cancellation, of shadow banning, of attempting to control the narrative, not only for election purposes, but in terms of getting control uh, of the American people. This is about money and control.